A spotlight for you for some stock picks, some long shorts. Melissa Armo is with us, founder, owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, great to see you. Today we've heard from Evercore ISI. I mean, they put a 6,000 uh, 6, price target on the S&P for year end. Goldman Sachs has a 5,600. Where do you think the market is headed? I do want to hear about the picks here, but what's your big picture on the market? What's driving it? Big picture in the market and what's driving the market higher is the fact that the Fed is really wishy-washy about making any decisions about raising rates or keeping rates the same or lowering rates. And I guess that has really made the market feeling very exuberant. So as long as the Fed continues to say that they're going to lower rates, even if they don't, um, I don't think the market cares. And obviously, the economy is very strong, which is one of the reasons that the Fed has not decided to lower rates. So remember, we're in an election year. So I really don't think the Fed is going to do much of anything in 2024. Maybe they will lower rates one time this year. Maybe they won't do anything. I don't think they're going to lower rates twice. But the market thinks they will. The market thinks that the worst is over and concerning rates. And it's interesting because, again, when the meeting was last week and when the Chairman Powell talked, he talked about the fact that in 12 months in 2025, the expectation was that the unemployment rate could get up to four and a quarter. Well, I don't see how that's good news for the economy. It's certainly good no, not new, good news for people who are working who might lose their jobs. And yet you look at the market and everything seems rosy and cherry and great. But again, reality is not necessarily uh, the way that the market acts. <laughs> Hand yeah. in hand. Understood. You know, there was a time that you were on and we had, you and I had conversations and, and you didn't have one stock pick because you were concerned about the market selling off and the momentum it had to the downside. Now, do you find that there are many names to pick? Is it getting easier to pick stocks? I mean, I know you have a few longs for us today. Well, Apple's rallying right now. I think the best long today is Apple, which I didn't have on the original list. That's, that had a massive boost last week, and that's got one more leg up in it, at least, I think. 2020 was the high last week after it took off like a rocket with this AI stuff. And so I think Apple's probably the best pick today. But as far as going long stocks, again, they're just going to, strong stocks are going to continue to move up as, mar, as well as the market. People want to short the market, then it doesn't fall, then it fakes like it's going to fall, and then it rallies again and makes continues to make new highs. Again, the QQQ's got over 480 this morning. They look like they're going to go all the way up to 500. You mentioned 600 in the SPY. I mean, again, we got plenty of time left in the year. At this point now, I really think the only thing that could mess up this market, the bullish move in the market, would be something that would happen that would be totally unexpected, that would have absolutely nothing to do with the Fed, absolutely nothing to do with interest rates. It would be something, uh, God forbid, something overseas about some kind of military escalation, yeah. which definitely could happen. But other than that, I don't think there's any trajectory that's going to screw up this market. I think we continue higher. And the problem is people are missing out on the bullish move because they want to wait for a pullback. The pullback doesn't come. And it just keeps screaming higher than people shorted at the highs and it keeps screaming higher again. So I think you have to take a look at what you're doing and be selective. I still like to short stocks. There's things I like to the downside. There's things to, that are dropping. But you also don't want to miss an opportunity to go long if things are setting up right. And there are some things that are setting up right. I'd like Tesla yes, higher. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, that's another yeah. one that I had on the watch. I think that's going to have a massive breakout at some point, too. Um, so you have Apple, you have Tesla. Those are, are both in the Magnificent Seven. You also have Oracle and Adobe um, as your name. So a lot of tech type of stocks in that group. Tell me a little bit about which ones do you think have the best potential for an upside move? I think the best potential probably is Tesla because it's been trading down for so long and it's finally got the expected news that everybody thought that Musk is going to get the pay package he wanted. And again, they're, they're full on in Texas now. So I think it's good news for investors and good news for the stock because the stock has been basing out for what feels like forever. And again, I'm not saying they're going to get up back to the highs again anytime soon. It's so far away from the last high that it had, which was several years ago. And the market's been so bullish. But Tesla, with the backdrop of a bullish market, has a long way to run. And I think that's very, very positive. And of course, Apple, too. 
Apple could get to 250 before you even know it. I mean, when you look at where we're going here into the holidays in a couple of weeks, it's going to be July 4th. And then, boom, we come back from July 4th and it's earnings season. And then all these companies are going to report. And to think that they can't make 20, 30 percent jumps even in the next 30 to 45, 60 days, depending when their earnings are setting up, they absolutely could. Remember, Tesla has to report. And I think that's in July. Same thing with Apple. So, I mean, here we are. We're almost at the end of June. And these things could continue because of earnings, not just because of the market. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you quantify yourself as a screaming bull at this point, but you're certainly on the <laughs> bullish side of things. You do have some shorts here, which have financials, right? You have financials on your short list, Boeing and Disney, two names that, you know, unfortunately just have been having a hard time. Tell me a little bit about the short picks list. Well, I've been liking Boeing, you know, to the downside for a while. That's lifting today with the overall market. But again, Boeing has had many, many problems. And I think I still think Boeing is a solid short. Definitely Disney is a solid short. And again, Disney had earnings this past quarter and they were abysmal. So again, I don't know what's going to change really with the next report when that is out. But I'm telling you that the things that are even looking like they're going to have a rally today, it's a fake rally in Boeing and Disney because I still like those stocks slower. And the banks were selling off last week. Again, with all the news with interest rates, you would think that the banks would be continuing to move up. But some of these banks, even the strong banks, really, I think, could be possibly nervous. Why? If, again, people lose their jobs, that's a problem with them making payments. If interest rates continue to stay high, that hurts people making payments on credit cards. And also right. then banks are not going to lend as much money. They can't. People can't afford it when you still have uh, yeah. mortgage rates at seven and a half percent, seven, seven, five. I mean, again, if we would go into a recession in the next 12 to 24 months, even though nobody thinks it's going to happen, but it still could, if that would happen, then that it could take, banks could take a hit. Even strong banks could take a hit, yeah. but they may not be anticipating. Yeah. And what percentage to the downside could some of these names, Boeing, Disney, Goldman Sachs, or JP Morgan, um, you know, do you see 10 percent downside? What kind of downside do you see? Well, you can absolutely see business? that. Again, one one negative earnings, you could see 20 percent or more downside in some of these things. Again, so, you know, JPM is still strong. Goldman is still strong. These stocks are in an uptrend. That's true. But again, they're carrying the, the weight and the meat and potatoes of so many of these financials when so many of the small banks are not doing well. They're still not doing well. You still could see some more of these regional banks go under. And again, some of these big banks have picked them up and they're still carrying the weight of that. And you don't really know what the outcome of that's going to be, again, going into 2025. I think a lot of it's going to have to do with the election. Depends who wins. Things could change. And so everybody, I think, for this year is probably going to sit tight. But come November after the election, then anything could happen. Melissa Armo, The Stock Swoosh, thank you so much. Great to see you. Appreciate it.